My name is Roland Andersen. I'm a professor in psychiatry from Oslo, Oslo University. And I'm uh, head of the bipolar group in Enigma and also we've just been starting the CNV or copy number variants group. In my working groups uh, in the bipolar we now have more than 30 sites all across the globe. We have uh, just recently added someone from Australia, but we have the US, Europe, uh, Asia. So it's uh, quite a big undertaking and having uh, telephone conferences is a nightmare because of all the different uh, time zones. When I looked uh, last time it's more like uh, 5,000. So we have uh, 2,500 uh, patients with bipolar disorder images and then roughly the same uh, health controls. So bipolar disorder is a well-known disease, has been uh, with us uh, humans since antiquity. It's, it's uh, characterized by mood episodes, meaning that you can have episodes of mania with very uh, elated uh, high activity, little sleep, which can be really uh, uh, severe with psychosis. And then periods of normal moods in between, and then uh, can have depressions, very severe depressions with low activity, bad sleep, uh, uh, lack of concentration, and uh, little initiative. So there are some medication that are, is working, and they're called mood stabilizers that are pretty e efficient, but they're not good enough. So we're still uh, lacking uh, uh, efficient treatments. It's uh, still a big enigma. In fact, it is an enigma with bipolar disorder, the cause of the disease. Why are people affected? And that is uh, not yet known. Uh, there are some indications from, uh, from different kind of studies, but the exact location of the pathology, what is wrong, is in general not known. And okay. then, and then uh, using brain imaging is a perfect tool to sort of dig into the causes of the disease. And, but the main problem so far has been uh, the complexity. Because bipolar disorder for many years people thought it was like one cause or one brain structure that was wrong or pathological, but it's, it seems to be much more complex. And in order to find the small subtle changes in the brain, you can't have 10 patients or 20 or 100, you need really big samples. And that's why Enigma is so well uh, fitted exactly to look into the, the pathology of bipolar disorder. So uh, what we have been doing in the bipolar disorder group is to combine different approaches. We have the brain imaging and we are also having information about the drug treatment and duration of illness and what kind of clinical characteristics. So we are sort of trying to uh, see if there are different changes in the brain in the early stage than in the late stage of the disease. We're now working on the new approaches. We have done the structure and now we're looking into connectivity and uh, or white matter connectivity and, uh, and uh, different activation patterns. It's a long list of uh, <laughs> things we have been discovering in the bipolar disorder group, but this, I think the most amazing thing has been that when we really put these large samples together, then we, we see that there's a pattern of, of pathology that's emerging. There have been all these studies before, giving a glimpse from one angle or the other, and then you can really not tell if it's true or not. But by putting this together, you really need to get a solid answer. And, and we, we find very specific uh, brain changes that seems to be sort of closer to the real pathology of the disease, and that has been enabled by bipolar disorder working group of Enigma. What we're now working on is the next step, you know, to combine this with genetic information. We have followed the clinical and the imaging path, and now we want to, to do a combination with genes, because bipolar disorder is a disorder with high heritability because of families. So how we can sort of combine and get get sort of added value from uh, growth, brain and genetics, that's the next step.